Now that we're done with some initial information about area, like how to look at a region, a closed region, or uh, regions that are congruent will have the same area, or how do you estimate a region, let's actually get into finding the area. And we'll start with finding the area of a rectangle. So here I have this rectangle. It's a four centimeters in one direction and three centimeters in the other. Uh, a rectangle is has one right angle. Well, we know if it has one right angle, it has four right angles. And we would call this the length is four and the width is three. Although it really does not matter which one you call the length and which one you call the width. I could have stood this rectangle on its side and the four centimeters could be along this side and the three centimeters could be along this side. It would still have the same area. So now the area of a rectangle is going to be when you multiply the length times the width of the rectangle. So in algebra, if I were to multiply 3x times 4x, I'm going to get 12 x squared. 3 times 4 is 12, and then x times x is x multiplied by itself twice. Well, if I had a rectangle that was a 3 centimeter by 4 centimeter rectangle, the area is going to be 12, and then centimeter times centimeter is centimeter squared. Area is always in square units. So let's look at it's very important that the units be the same for both the length and the width before you find the area. So uh, this is not, I'll draw this diagram here. If we need to multiply two feet by six inches, so if I have a, a two foot by six inch rectangle, I would want to change the marking I'm not going to do feet times inches. I want to do inches times inches. So if I want to change this all to inches, rather than this being two feet, 12 inches in one foot, 24 inches in two feet. This would be 24 inches. 24 by 6. So if we were to find the area of this rectangle in inches, actually in square inches, it would be 24. The area would be 24 times 6. So that area would be 144 square inches. I can do SQIN for square inches or I can do inches squared. They mean the same thing. Now what if I didn't want my answer in inches? Let's take the same rectangle. That's going to be my two foot by six inch. What if I wanted my answer in feet? This is in inches, but what if I wanted my answers in feet? If 12 inches is a foot, 6 inches is a half foot, 0.5 or 1 half. So now the area of this triangle is now going to be 2 times 1 half. So that area would be 1 square foot or one foot squared. And so now we know that one square foot is equal to 144 square inches. That's a conversion we can always use if we ever want to look at uh, units, square units changed from feet to inches. So you can think of it as length times width, but the area of a rectangle, the formula for the area of a rectangle is the base side times the height side. You multiply the two dimensions. 
It's pretty common though for people to rather than say the length of the base to say the length of one side and rather than say the height to say the width because we think of dimensions as length times width. So here's our formula for rectangle, area of a rectangle. All right, so let's find the area of this rectangle. We're told that we have this rectangle. AB is 12 inches, I'm sorry, 12 centimeters, and AD is 7 centimeters. So we have both units that we need. So area is going to equal the length times the width, which means the area is going to be 12 times 7, which means my area is going to be 84 square centimeters. Now, what if in the problem they ask you to find the area, but they don't provide units? Then we just use the word units. So if this had had a rectangle of, they told us this was 7 and this was 12, our area would be 84 square units or units squared. We just use the word units. So here's our next formula. The area of a square, a square is a rectangle where the sides are congruent. I try to make that look like a square. Area is a square where the sides are congruent. So length times width would be like side times side. The area of a square is side squared, side times side. Now what about a parallelogram? Rectangles were easy because they came to right angles. So it was very easy to find the height or what we would describe as the altitude. The area of a rectangle is still the base, the length of the base, times the height. We can think of that as the base times the altitude. And remember what an altitude is. An altitude is a line segment from one side perpendicular to the other side. From one side perpendicular to the other side. So. In this particular parallelogram, I'm going to highlight the parallelogram so you can see it. If I was given parallelogram V, T, S, R, there are several ways I could find the altitude. All of these are equal in length. From this vertex, perpendicular to the opposite side, from this vertex perpendicular to the opposite side. If I wanted to go from this vertex perpendicular to the opposite side, that altitude is the same altitude. It's just going to be outside the parallelogram. So the side drawn to is the base. In this diagram, this would be the base. For this altitude, this would be the base. For this altitude, this would also be the base. I also could have drawn Altitudes, the definition of altitude is a line segment from a vertex or one side to, to an opposite side and perpendicular. I could have picked this line segment as the altitude. Well, then that would have been the base. Or I could have picked this line segment as the altitude. Well, then this segment would have been the base. So you have some options when it comes to your parallelograms, as long as you know that the base is the side that the altitude is parallel to. 
And so here the area of a parallelogram with a base B and an altitude H is base times height. So let's look at this diagram. We have two problems here. Given that all the dimensions in this figure are in inches, find the area of the parallelogram using, in the first case, the base MN. In the first case, using, I'm sorry, using base MN. So if this is my base, so for A, MN is my base. So my base is MN, and in this diagram, MN is 8. Because if this side is 8, then this side is 8 in a parallelogram. Opposite sides are congruent in a parallelogram. So which line segment is my altitude? QT would be my altitude because that is the segment from a vertex to the opposite side, the opposite side being the base. So QT is my altitude, and they have in the diagram that that's 5. So my area is going to be 8 times 5, base times height. So my area is going to be 40 square inches. Keeping the same parallelogram, let's find the area using a different altitude. Now, of course, we know the answer should be the same. Okay, but what if we're going to use PN as the base? So in this case, my base is PN, and we're told PN is equal to 6. Well, if PN is the base, what's my altitude? What is the segment from a vertex perpendicular to that side? That's out here, even though it's outside the triangle. My altitude in this case is MR, which is 6 and 2 thirds. So for these measurements, my area is going to be 6 times 6 and 2 thirds. And if you were to use your calculator, what is 6 times 6 and 2 thirds? It is also 40. And we're going to add our units, square inches. So you can see the area is the same regardless of which side you pick as the base and the altitude.